Hong Course was an amazing show. Thanks to Bubadi of Newport Beach for housing the cars on their return. Now I gotta take them back to their home and it looks gorgeous. And tomorrow I'm gonna give you guys a full rundown on the show and everything that was super exciting. But don't worry, I'm not gonna make you wait another day. I'm gonna put it in with this video. All right, well, Nate, you're in luck today. You're gonna be driving my Rembrandt Bugatti. Oh, okay. One of my favorite bugs. So keep it under the speed limit. <laughs> I'll say right behind uh, you. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> drive the Chiron. All right, see you there. Oh, they look great at Concourse, but they look much greater in my garage. Oh, let's go get the Rembrandt. I think you're right when you said Bugatti is the most drivable hypercar there is. I'm telling you, most luxurious, most sophisticated, and most expensive hypercar on the planet. Man, boy, am I glad I'm done driving Bugattis. All right, guys, sorry, but I have a meeting to go to, but we'll pick this back up tomorrow, and I will wrap up my event at Concourse. What an amazing trip. Hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned. Wow, that was a very long meeting. Let's continue about the concourse at when. I'm gonna be looking at my clips on the screen, so if I'm looking over here, don't mind me. I'm looking at you, technically. So right here, we're in a Gulfstream G4, and we're about to land, and I zoom in right at the concourse at when, and you can see all those cars. The weather was absolutely incredible. It was a beautiful day, a lot of fun. Now, was that your first time seeing the Sphere? No, I've seen the Sphere before, but this was the first time I had the smiley on a Sphere. Oh, gotcha. What do you think about it? Do you think it was worth it? Well, I don't know what they were thinking. I heard something like they got to do 200 million a year to break even. That's a lot of advertising money. And, you know, when recession hits, which I think we're already in one, you know, first thing gets cut is ad spend. And it's a tough business to be in, especially if it's running you that much. So. And I know they have some challenges already. So hopefully they, they'll get over the hump, but incredible, incredible view from up close. That thing is huge. And I'm gonna get up close and personal at F1 in a few days. So when was gracious enough to send us two Phantoms, they really know how to take you in style. Thank you so much to Max, Tyson, Polly, everybody at the when. They're just incredible team over there. And it was a great, great grand entrance. We finally arrived at the concourse and there goes Layla. She had to fill in for Nate. And the first round of cars we got to was incredible. Look at this EB110 Bugatti in white, incredible. This is only one of 30 and probably one of one in factory white. So you passed right by a LFA. Where is the LFA? Oh, I didn't even see it. On the right. Oh my God, the orange one, yes. <laughs> so there is a Lexus LFA, but you know, I couldn't get my eyes off of those two CLK GTRs. Those things are like 10 to 15 million bucks each. So it's like a very rare, very rare to see side by side. Absolute monsters. These two will be auctioned at RM. And I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be attending in a couple of days. How much were they when they first came out? I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I gotta look that up, but yeah. I know they're creeping up there. I mean, they say it's gonna be a 20, 30 million dollar car really? eventually. Do you see it happening? It's already happening. Oh. I think one sold for 12 million. Oh. So they're estimating 10 to 15 million on these, but you know, we'll see what happens at RM. So this is a Lewis Hamilton Formula One car. It's gonna be auctioned off. I'm anxious to see how much it's gonna go for. That, the, that thing is unreal in person. It's crazy. Now we go to this side of the lawn. This is a big boy section. Bunch of Bugattis, 918 Spider. Oh, look at those McLarens. There is several P1 GTRs. Now, is a 8K ever in your, in your plans? I don't know. I mean, my car is already kinda is MSO because they, put the upgraded carbon fiber body. So if I have to redo it again with MSO, do an HDK is like, I don't know, it'll be like the third variation or upgrade. I may buy another P1 that's not so rare and do the HDK, that would make more sense. All the HDKs here in this lineup, what was your favorite? I'm gonna have to go with the, I don't know, that British green looks really mean. Yeah, I love that something very rare and right here we got a bugatti chiron super sport really nice I mean, this car does over 300 miles an hour if you take up the speed limiter now was there a reason why you passed up on this one well you know at the time i had the bugatti bullied ordered and i already have a chiron hermes edition which is one of one and this car i think does 272 miles an hour if i'm not mistaken there's a speed limiter on it so i'm never gonna head my car does 262 but in hindsight, I think I should have got it. It's one of 30 super sports are always gonna be bringing more value, better investments long-term. 
for the next Bugatti variant. I'm gonna make sure I get the Super Sport. Here, we move over to Pagani. There is three cool Paganis, two very rare ones. I think those are Dan's, my buddy. And then you move over, you got three McLaren Sabres followed by a cool McLaren Speedtail. Why no Sabre? What, what, what turned you away from a Sabre? To be frank, the performance on it wasn't that impressive for a $3.8 million car. That's a big price tag. At the time, I had placed the order for the Bugatti Bolide. So, you know, I'm not a billionaire, guys. I gotta like choose my battles, you know, when it comes to high price tag hypercars. Now, here's a Regera. Jeffrey Chang and Dan were over there. It was great to see them. They always bring their lineup, most of it, and they're a big supporter of Concourse. On the Ruggiera, like, that never struck like a, like something for you? you like never? No, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not crazy about the rear of the car. Okay. To be front, it's very wide, it's nice in the front, but the rear, and it's not as loud. You know, when you see the Aguero RS versus the Regera. And I meet the Mestral again, as you guys saw in my other videos. This is done in chocolate. I think they're trying to copy my Pagani Hermes edition here. Just kidding. But the color was pretty cool in person. In the video, it doesn't show it justice, but it's really nice pearl brown. And of course, we see the Spectre. Mine is coming next week. I'm super excited. This is a full electric. Basically the new version of the Wraith called a Spectre and I'm not so crazy about those colors. I don't know. I heard it's basically like running on water. It's so smooth. As I was walking through, I even saw vehicles I'd never seen before. I don't know what these two are, but seems like one's from the 40s or 50s and the other one is a futuristic concept. Now for the feature presentation, here are my two Bugattis, my Rembrandt and Hermes edition Chiron and a lot of people wanted to take pictures they look pretty cool in the sun if I may say so was this the first time you guys ever been to Vegas yes and of course I ran into my very good friend Bruce Meyer this guy is a legend huge huge car collector he's the one that runs the Rodeo concourse every year on Father's Day he even has his own holiday named after him yeah. are you guys ready for this look at this mobster car this is a 1920s Rolls Royce one-off, it's called a round door because the doors are round. I've seen this multiple times at Peterson Museum and also at the Rodeo Concourse show. Every time I see it in person, it takes my breath away and I keep telling myself, I gotta make something similar to this with a coach builder and just have a one-off, totally cool, huge classic car. I need to stop procrastinating and just get on with it and do it. Now, this was another cool Rolls Royce I ran into. Very super, super rare. It almost looks like the Bugatti Royale and the exterior was finished in some gold leafing. I talked to the owner, I says, how much? He says, how much what? He said, it doesn't have a value, but he thinks it's worth 12 to $15 million, which is crazy. For that kind of money, I'd rather buy Shaw's Bugatti from Peterson Museum, but it's not for sale. But when it is, let me know. I'll be right over there with my checkbook. And to end it, I had an amazing lunch. It was called Lunch with the Legends. It was Jay Leno, Bruce Meyer, and also Mr. Harlan from the Harlan Winery. About 40 people in attendance, very intimate. Got to chat with Jay, Bruce, and hopped on the jet and got back to work. Well, that wraps it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and make sure to check out my next video, which I'm gonna go behind the scenes, up close and personal with the F1 cars and drivers. And this is one of the best, best VIP experiences you can have. And I'm super excited, my first time going to the paddock and I'm gonna share that with you guys. So with that said, be safe, be well. See you guys on the next one. Let me show you how I turned my real estate portfolio from 1 million to $100 million in just six years. In my coaching programs, I don't just give you a roadmap. I actually teach you how to underwrite deals, how to find it, and how to add value using my strategies I've learned in the past 30 years. And there's no better time than now because the next two years are gonna present the best buying opportunities, in my opinion, for commercial real estate. Take advantage of my commercial real estate contrarian academy programs. It comes with live calls, accountability coach, as well as property previews by me. And you also get access to me on a monthly basis. Basically, in the six month time, I'm going to teach you most of my strategies that I've learned in the past 30 years that proven to be successful for me. Gain access to my free real estate training video by clicking the button below.